Uh, a lot of people like this canvas. It's a very, very real canvas. It's a Belgian linen. Probably the best canvas in the world. But to, to work on little scraps that cut off like that is the same as, as with paper. You don't work on, on bad paper. You work on the best paper you can get. This is a standard uh, stretcher frame. And we put it down like that. Then for your first attachment, you just fold the, the canvas over nicely. And tack it down. Now it gets a bit tougher because now we've got to go to the far side. And on the far side here, we've got to get some tension on it. So you've got this special tensioning thing, specially made for stretching canvases. And you pull it like that to get it nice and taut. And now we're going to take this side and do the same thing here. Grab it nicely. And Good one. Okay. And this one. As well, it's a nice tension on it. And it's a little bit smaller than it should be. Uh, I've got a better idea. Here we go. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, safe. And staple. Right. Yeah. And staple. Wait. Yeah. Okay. You know to fill this tricky thing in here. Okay, can I staple there? No, <clears throat> yeah, that's perfect. Just one at a time. Take it one way. Thank you. Come over. Side ready. Perfect. Okay, just fold this one. Okay, now this should be a very, very well stretch canvas, you see? And you can normally test it like that with the paint brushes on it. Makes a nice noise, it's nicely stretched. Good. One reason why sometimes we don't do this is because we can go to a shop and buy one of these. But if you go to the shop, you pay quite a lot of money, and somebody still had to do the work. And in the olden days, Rembrandt, Vermeer, and all of those great artists, they had to do this themselves, or if they're a little bit better off, they had assistants to do it for them. Like at one stage, uh, stuff for hardware. All right, this is ready for painting on. It's, it's quite a nice one. And the canvas is the good type. Okay. Right. This is the setup for the lemon painting in oil as I intend to work on it. I like to work with my canvas right next to the still life. Normally that will be on a little still life table and this will be on an easel. But for filming it's much better for me to work where the light is decent from there. I get good light on my canvas and I get good light on my subject. And I can just about get to the 
uh, to the canvas with a brush. So this is the way I like to do my demos. Look at this canvas here. Hey? It's a stretch canvas. It's 10 times more difficult to do it yourself. Much easier to go to the shop and spend your, your, your money and buy a decent one, a really, really, really good one because these guys are professionals. Uh, but it's very nice. If you want to learn it, you can follow the steps. Otherwise, I'll give you uh, indications to a book that will teach you how to do it. As I showed before, when we want to mix a thin turpsy wash, it is better to put your turpentine into a small container. A saucer would be absolutely more than enough. Just make sure you've got enough, because you've got to cover this whole thing. Whoopsie. It was naughty. A bit of turpentine spilled on my canvas. But that doesn't matter. The cloth wipes it away. Turpentine is a cleaner. A household cleaner. Right, now we're going to add a bit of colour to it. And the colour that I would like to add to it for the wash, in this case, is going to be more of a green colour. A little bit more the actual lemon. So I'm going to take pure turpentine there, and I'll take yellow ochre, mix it there, and yellow. Okay, that's the kind of color that I would like to get. It's maybe a little bit too strong yellow. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of red in there as well to make this color really nice. Like an earth. And then just mix it in there. Like that. If I want the darker, I'll take some more of the color from my palette and add it there. But that looks like a good color to, to do the basic color beginning with. And I'm going to do that now, but now I've still got a spot for this thing. So it won't fall off the table. Okay. So like the watercolor washes that we have looked at for um, oil painting, we also glaze, we also do our color beginning from left to right, from left to right, and right across, don't waste, oopsie, and then we go there to connect there, we've got to work relatively fast, because if we don't work fast enough, the stuff will dry uneven and streaky with lines, we really don't want that, so you see there's much more colour at the moment, on the left side there, because that's where I started from, so now I just drag that colour right across the canvas to the other side. Okay, that looks like a good colour beginning to me. I can't guarantee that it's going to be a good colour, but it looks like a good colour. And that's enough. Now, gravity starts to work on this. Exactly the same as in the watercolour. But with the watercolour, that play of gravity pulling downwards on the wash is much more dramatic than it is in oil paints but in oil paints it's also there it's just more mm, muted more civilized but it's doing beautiful things the paint trickles down with the gravity this uh, board is at an angle of 10 degrees the paint trickles down with a, with a play of gravity and it will settle into the little crevices, the natural crevices, the canvas is like a rock, it's like a rock surface, like marble, and it should dry very, very beautiful. Now, avoid trying to do anything advanced until we've mastered the most basic things, and this is a basic one, but to get this basic one right is incredibly difficult. You've got to get it just wet enough, just dry enough, drag it across, make sure each one links, and then when you get it to the bottom, walk away, this is only turpentine. Turpentine dries fast. This should be, in theory, dry enough to run your hand over it in 10 minutes. But don't go and mess around by running your hands over it in 10 minutes. Leave it for half an hour or so. Then we can carry on. Then we're gonna to go to the line drawing. 
continuing on the theme of simplicity, uh, I'm going to do a drawing now with my Rigo brush. This is a Rigo brush. I've got a whole lot of them in my house, but sometimes, sometimes the um, the tip of the brush sprays a little bit, and then it's not as good as it should be. But there you go. pick up a tiny bit of paint on the end of the brush. It's like a pinhead. And now we have to draw the subject of our painting. This is dry enough, yeah, dried long enough. Draw it in in a simple, clean outline. An outline is essentially a you come to a line. It is the line that describes the shape or the form of what we're drawing. And contour means that that part of the object which is turning away from our line of vision. Let me pick up some extra yellow. And that part. Extra yellow here. And continue my line that's a bit too pale. And I pick up some more of my greenish color. There. It straightens out there and does a sharpish corner. A tiny bit of blue in here for variation. Comes down and makes a little bump. Like that. That is a contour line. It's describing the contour. Of the lemon and yeah we carry on with the contour line not sure about the shape yet there that's coming on quite nicely but down here I think it needs to come lower and then around a little bit further like this that looks more accurate to me. And accuracy is everything. The word accurate does not mean perfectly precise. The word accurate means done with great care. Or the other meaning for the word care, done with love. And that is what the word accurate means. So that looks about accurate to me. But now I drew the line first and then I drew the line a second time. And I don't like a little patch on the line. It's the exact same line that I've already drawn. But I like to repeat it. So that that which appears on the oh no no, bloody move shouldn't have moved. That which appears on the canvas is the shape, the shape of the lemon. And there, be nice if I can link this line and that line together. It's just one line. One line stated two or three times. That's all. Don't draw any other lines in. Don't draw lines or shadows. Don't draw lines of detail on the surface. That's all. It is no more than just placing your composition element on the canvas. This thing could have been a little bit more this way, a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but that's where it is. And that's the way I'll work with it. And that's all we do with our composite, with, with our um, a line drawing with our blocking in. So the shape is now blocked in. We don't need any more detail. We will be studying the shadow that comes over the body here. We will be. But we'll do that with color. We'll do that with, with, with massing in. And we'll do a bit of shadow there. We'll do a little bit of light here. The light will basically be left as it is now. And the shadows will be indicated a bit darker. All right. That's enough for one day's work. I'd like to try the light, delicate line here. And I'm going to 
I do the same technique as I did before, but I added some white paint into this blue now. Yeah. I'm looking for a really, really, really fine line. And it looks like this one is working. This one here, that's working. Okay, now I'm making a bit of a mess. But that's okay. The mess that I'm making is very, 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 very neat. But now, now I've got a much better line, which means that I have learned something. The final line, it's color mixed with white and the line is finer, much more precise in feeling uh, and I'll repeat the line over there. Okay, so I've got a little bit of mess here. If you make a mistake while you're doing fine work, it's better if you leave the mistake there, like that mistake there. Don't try to get rid of it. That mistake there. Don't try to get rid of it and that mistake there. Just state what you really, really want. And what you really, really want is a very, very fine outline of the lemon as it really looks. So. Um, I think I can improve the shape of the lemon a fraction by coming around here and lower it a little bit, tiny bit lower. Okay, so that's just the restatement, not a correction so much. So my old rule to myself and to my students, it's always been, do not fix, do not fill, restate. Okay, now I have two statements, two, two ghost images, like a, like a strobe photograph, moving like that, of the, of the subject. Now, I can paint it there, that was what I originally had in mind, but I didn't have it in the right place, or I can paint it there. That is also nice. I can't paint in both places, but I'll draw one. I'll paint one of them. So I'll leave this to dry nicely. And then I'll carry on with the scumbling. But I'm very happy to have discovered or rediscovered or whatever it might be, how to draw a really fine line. So the secret of drawing a really fine line is when, when I did my first lines, which I did with a green color, I used the color like that and I had mixed them together a little bit come to think about it I had mixed them together a little bit I took some of the green like that some yellow like that and if I remember correctly some ochre like that then I put it onto my palette knife like that and I tried to get just the tiniest brush tip of color. And with that brush tip, I tried to draw a fine, fine, fine line. Now I'm going to try and do it again. It's fine. Certainly it's much finer than those lines. And I think the secret here is that after I'd struggled with my rear brush there, then the rigger brush had gotten a little, had been rather, had had been a little bit damaged. As I say, sometimes the rigger brush, when it gets old, the tip is no longer um, is no longer needle needle pointed. And then you clean it in a little bit of turpentine, which I did, and I cleaned it in a little bit of linseed oil, which I also did. And then after it's cleaned in the linseed oil. 
And this is a general tip for brush cleaning. After it's cleaned in the linseed oil, or the linseed oil mixture, the, 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 the painting medium, then the brush is really, really clean and it is full of oil. This oil will protect the integrity of that brush tip for a long time, as, as long as I would say 10 days. And you can come back and you can use the brush and it will be nice and soft. So that there the brush is a bit compromised, there's a little bit better. Okay.